Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will be going to explain you IPv4 frame format. And here there are so many interesting concepts that is there with this IPv4 format. And I will explain you each and every concepts in great details. Why the reason is, this basic concepts that frequently comes in competitive examination as well as in university examination. So, I will explain you each and every field along with practical examples. So, your concepts will get clear and you can be able to reply to any question which is there based on IPv4. So, first of all, as if I say IPv4 frame format, then I used to say it in this way, IPv4 packet format. Why? The reason is IPv4 that is working at network layer. An output of network layer that is packet. And that packet will be given to data link layer and data link layer will form frame. So, I used to say my students like IPv4 packet format that we have. But in books, they are mentioning it in this way, IPv4 frame format. Now, at first look, you might be thinking like this frame format that is very difficult. But let me tell you, this is very easy. Once you see this video till last, you will be able to understand how this frame is there. And you can understand each and every field in great details. Let me show you some basics first. Like if you observe this frame format at first look, then you see from version to this destination IP address, from version to this destination IP address that is having size of 20 bytes and that is mandatory field, means it is compulsory, right? From version to this destination address, right? So that is compulsory field that is having size of 20 bytes. After destination address, there is options field that is optional and that is used by internet service provider. It can have maximum size of 40 bytes. So, minimum size of IPv4 header that will be 20 bytes and with options maximum is 40 bytes. So, 40 plus 20 that will be 60. So, IPv4 header, this IPv4 header Right, this IPv4 header that is having maximum size up to 60 byte and minimum it will be 20 bytes. And after header, we are loading payload or you can say data. Right, so IPv4 frame format, in that we need to understand how IPv4 header is there. So, basically in internet, there are two types of internet protocol. One is IPv4. That is what I will be explaining in this video and second is IPv6. The reason is right now in this world, we are running out of number of IP addresses. With IPv4, we have source IP and destination IP that is having size of 32 bits, right? And with 32 bits, we can have 2 to the power 32 number of IP addresses available. And right now, our global population that is around 785 crore right so based on that right now we are running out of number of ip addresses and that's why ipv6 that is what in future you will be observing that frame format that will be dominating but right now in 2023 by 98 percentage of usage ipv4 is functioning right now let us try to understand each and every field in great detail so first of all i'll explain you what is the field which is there with version See, version explains you what is the version which is there with this given internet protocol frame. Like as I have told you, there can be two versions, IPv4 and IPv6. So, this first four bits, this first four bits, right, that explains you version. If it is 0, 1, 0, 0 means 4, then you can say this given, this given packet or given frame that belongs to IPv4. If it is 0, 1, 1, 0, then given frame that belongs to IPv6, right. Now, next field that is IHL. See, IHL means internet header length. This internet header length that is also having size of 4 bits, right. So, how header length that is defined? See, by this 4 bits only header length is defined. See how it is defined. Whatever value which is there with this IHL, right? With that, we are multiplying 4. So, IHL 
bit values that will be that will be going up to what value four ones four ones means 15 so 15 multiplied by 4 that will be 60 right so header length you see i have told you what is the maximum size of header length 60 bytes so here so here if i say ihl that is all ones what it means entire header length that is 4 into 15 means 60 bytes right and i have told you this 20 bits sorry this 20 bytes that is mandatory up to destination address so minimum value of ihl that will be 5 so ihl will vary from 5 to ihl will vary from 5 to 50 right now there is one interesting thing that you need to understand like see if ihl is 12 then what should be header length 12 into 4 that is 48 but as if i say header size that is 46 means option field that is having 26 byte 26 plus 20 which is mandatory so in total 46 bytes are there then we need to add padding of 2 bytes right so always remember always ipv4 header that will be having length which is there in terms of super multiple of 4 ipv4 header that is having length which is there in terms of super multiple of 4 right so if option field if see this uh, mandatory field up to destination IP that is having size of 20 bytes. So, minimum value of IHL that will be 5 only, 5 into 4 that will turn 20, right. But this optional field that, that can be having any value in between 0 to 40 byte, right. So, as if it is there in between 0 to 40 byte, then your total header length that will vary in between 20 to, 4, 20 to 60 byte. So, if something is shorter than super multiple of 4, like if it is having total size of 46 byte, then padding will be added over here, right. Now, let us see how next field is there, that is DSCP and ECN. See, in majority of books, I have seen, like they are writing this as type of service, means this complete byte that they are mentioning as per type of services right but practically this this byte that is bisected into two regions one is dscp and second is ecn let me explain you what is dscp see dscp that is having size of 6 bits and it defines type of services for given packet by default its value is 6 zeros and for some services priorities should be given and Based on priority, routing of packet will happen. Like for example, as if we talk about voice over IP, like when you have voice over IP, nowadays uh, usually majority of companies are using voice over IP, rather they are going for GSM, normal conventional channel, right. Voice over IP along with internet is happening. So in voice over IP, that is real time application. So you cannot delay sending of that friend means routing should be given with higher priority right in video chat also that routing of frame that should be given with higher priority so in this type of services priority will be given in that case this dscp that will be given with some values and based on that priorities will be given right there are so many services so with each and every services different priorities are assigned but if there is nothing like priority in that case default value will be all zeros right this ecn that is having two bits that explains explicit congestion notification so as if in network too much congestion is there means network is overloaded by so much data in that case this two bits that comes into the picture usually you will be observing along with dscp this ECN is combined in many of the books. They are saying like this is what types of the services, right? Means DSCP plus ECN that is equals to types of services, right? But in practice, these two bits of ECN that is used to notify congestions, right? Now, let us have next field that is quite interesting. That is total length. See, total length that is having 2 byte size or you can say 16 bit size, right. Now, what it indicates? 
it indicates total length of packet. See here packet is what? Packet is this header plus data. Header plus data that is equals to packet. So total length of total length of this entire packet that is defined by this total length, right? That is defined by this 16 bits. How it is defined? So based on based on value of bits, right? So 16 bits are there. So 2 to the power 16. 2 to the power 16 is 64 KB. So 64 KB minus 1 that you need to do. Why the reason is maximum value of this total and that can be all ones. All ones means 64 KB minus 1. Right. So maximum size of packet that will be 64 KB minus 1. And minimum size of packet obviously mandatory field that you will have to send. So 20 byte is mandatory field. I am again and again saying this mandatory field that is having size of 20 bytes, right? So that is also we are defining in total length, right? So you can say minimum size of packet that will be 20 bytes, right? So that is been mentioned over here in binary with total length. Now you see, I'm I'm just writing source and destination IP first, right? Identification flag and this this fields that I'll explain you at last. First, source and destination IP address so that we know, right? Here we are using IPv4. So that is having 4 bytes, right? Means 32 bits. So you see source IP and destination IP that is loaded over here in header of this frame format, right? Now, let me explain you how next field is there. That is time to leave identification flag and fragmentation of fragment offset that i'll explain you at last right let us see first how time to leave is there time to live is there so see this is quite interesting i'll act, i'll have to explain you that by practical example let me explain you first what is the meaning of this see this is having size of one byte means eight bits it is hope counter it is hope counter and we use this field to avoid infinite loops of frame in network. Sometimes there is a possibility that there can be infinite loops and to avoid infinite loops, we have seen spamming tree protocol, right? But sometimes that happens like there can be infinite loops and that we can avoid by this field. Let me show you how. See, it is changed by the routers and the router will decrement it by one. And if it becomes zero, then hope will drop the frame. Let me show you an example. Like here, we are forwarding one frame, right? And with this frame, let us say time to live that is equals to 255. So when this frame comes over here, at that time, this router will decrement this by one, right? So that will make it to 254 and then it will forward it to router 2. Now router 2 will decrement this frame with this time to live field to 253 and it will forward it to destination, right? So here you see as hopes are happening, this field is getting decremented one by one. Now it is not like this time to live that will be having value 255. See as per 8 bits, that can be maximum by 255. At with 8 bits, it can be maximum by 255. So there can be question like if somebody asks you, uh, when we forward the frames, then how many maximum hopes are possible with IPv4? You can directly say maximum hopes are 255, right? More than 255 hopes cannot be there in transmission. Even if I send signal from India to Canada or USA, distance is too large, but maximum hopes that cannot increase beyond 255. Remember this. Why the reason is when frame goes from one hope to second hope at the time this value of time to live that will decrement by one and here we are having this why the reason is we want to avoid infinite loop for example what will happen in case of this frame goes in this loop if it is going in this loop again and again and let us say at router 3 at router 3 along with along with frame if this becomes zero then router 3 will drop this 
router 3 will drop this it will not further forward that in this loop right so this field that we use it to avoid infinite loops in network so there can be many question like how many hopes can be there why should we have time to leave field right so i think now it is clear to you now let us have next field that is protocol field if you observe here one byte protocol field is there means 8 bits it explains protocols of it explains protocols of data defined at transport layer so in transport layer we are having multiple protocols like we can have tcp udp igmp icmp all these protocols that i'm going to explain you in great detail in future coming videos of that computer network playlist but right now consider transport layer transport layer will give data right and that data will be there based on some protocol it may be tcp udp igmp icmp right so that protocol details that is given over here right the reason is see ipv4 that is functioning at which layer network layer so network layer is not having an idea about what what is happening in transport layer remember this network layer is not having an idea about what is happening at transport layer and at transport layer we are having protocols like tcp udp igmp icmp even there are so many other protocols so these protocols are having some priorities like tcp is having highest priority after that udp is having priority after that igmp is having priority after that icmp is having priority right so when routing is happening when routing is happening routing means when frame goes from one router to other router then how priorities will be given based on protocol even priorities will be given if tcp protocol is there then frame will be given with higher priority over the network right so here this protocol field that explains how protocols are there which is defined with data at transport layer those protocols can be tcp udp igmp icmp right we will see that protocols in great details now next field that is header checksum field see header checksum field if you observe here that is having size of 2 bytes that is having size of 2 bytes obviously what what is the purpose of this error checking header field here we are using crc check so C, by crc check we can have error checking right so this is what header checksum it is not checksum of entire frame remember this this is header checksum right but how exactly header checksum is happening let us try to understand that see first of all in this header in this header this header checksum field that is provided by zero means 16 zeros will be there after placing 16 zeros over here checksum is calculated and once checksum is calculated that checksum will be replaced over here instead of six, 16 zeros right so here first by placing header checksum is equals to 0 crc is calculated and then crc will be placed in header checksum right first we will be placing all zeros over here in header checksum after that we calculate checksum of header as per crc for crc also i have made video you just go through it so once you calculate crc place it over here that is header checksum right that is a checksum of header remember this now there can be question like i have told you just now time to live field that will change with respect to hope you see like when frame comes from here to here what will happen this time to live that will decrement by one so after hope that value will change so as if after hope value changes then header checksum should also change right so see at router time to leave ttl means time to leave will change and also some other fields will also change like ecn if congestion is there see ecn means what congestion explicit congestion notification so as if congestion is there in network then this ecn field will change right ttl can also change as well as option field also change i'll show you how option can option field also can change right so as if fields are changing then header checksum that will become invalid but router is a smart device what router will do is 
after every hop after every hop router will recalculate header checksum and it will place it over here right the reason is time to live field will change ecn will change as well as option field will change while routing is happening right so based on that router will calculate recalculate this header checksum and it will replace that right now see option field this option field that could vary from 0 to 40 bytes right and that is indicated by ihl this ihl field right i have already discussed that earlier so let us try to understand how option field is there see option field that is typically used by isps and network managers isps means internet service providers right so user is not using it remember this internet service provider and network manager they are using this field see there are two essential tasks that is performed by this option field there are so many other tasks even but usually these two tasks that comes in majority of cases right see those two tasks are route recording and source routing let me explain you that by practical example that will give you more clarity see route recording means what route recording means this field will be recording our route this field will be recording our route see at max what will be the size of what will be the size of option field it can be 40 bytes so here out of 40 2 bytes are reserved for some other task so you cannot use 2 bytes out of 40 we can use only 38 bytes now route recording that will happen route recording means we are recording route let me show you how for example for example as if i say here i am forwarding one frame right and along with along with this frame means header let me write header instead of frame header here we are having option field here we are having option field now once this frame goes to router one then then here in this field what will happen you see this header plus router one ip will get stored now once this frame is forwarded with after router two when router two forwards at that time along with header along with header router one and now router two these ips are stored so ip address is having how much size four bytes ip address that is having how much size four bytes so how many maximum ips can be recorded over here see this is the path this is the path right so for this path how many ips can be recorded over here so maximum size is 40 byte so as per 40 bytes there can be 10 10 ips recording but see 2 bytes are reserved so only 38 bytes are available and with 38 bytes we can record 9 ips of hope only right so recording means path recording will happen so ips of path that will be that will be stored in sequence so that internet service provider will be having an idea about how exactly frame transmission is happening right and remember this option field that is not used by users that is used by internet service providers and network manager right now see second is source routing this is also very interesting see source routing means what source will define so here source is not defining here internet service provider will define remember this again means source routing means at source we are providing what should be the routing see by option field source routing can be done there can be two types strict routing and loose routing let me explain you first how strict routing is there so in strict routing what i'll be doing is i'll be i'll be i'll be writing along with header see frame format will be like this only there will be header and then there will be option field so in option field as if i say r1 r2 and d that is there like this right then what will happen you see see this frame that will go to r1 first from r1 it will go to r2 and from r2 it will go to final destination that is h5 so here this is what strict routing why the reason is complete path complete path that is given over here from 
होस टू राउटर वन टू राउटर टू टू फाइनल डेस्टिनेशन देर कैन बी लूज राउटिंग सी इन लूज राउटिंग पार्शियल पाथ विल बी गिवन लाइक इफ यू इफ आई से हियर वी आर हैविंग हियर वी आर हैविंग हेडर एंड एज इफ आई से ऑनली आर वन राइट एज इफ आई से ऑनली आर वन एंड फ्रॉम आर वन टू गो टू डेस्टिनेशन नाउ इफ यू ऑब्जर्व हियर if you observe here see here this is h1 right from where it will go to r1 now it is saying like from router 1 to destination that you will have to go but there are multiple path it can go via this it can go via this so partial path is defined over here complete path is not defined right that's why you can say it is loose routing this is loose routing right so that is how this is loose routing so that is how two types of source routing that is possible and that we can define it in option field so i think now option field is also clear now only only three fields that we need to understand right identification flags and fragment offset right first of all i'll explain you meaning of this see identification that that is a unique id of given packet that you can say identification explains what unique id of given packet so for this packet unique id will be there right and then there are three bits four flag see first bit that is zero it is reserved it is zero second bit that is df bit df bit means do not fragment flag so here it says if it is equals to 1 then fragmentation is not allowed if it is equals to 1 then fragmentation is not allowed so here see fragment offset is there right so how fragmentation will happen that i am going to explain you in next video but fragmentation determination that happens by this three field only identification will explain see what is the id of given packet flags are having three bits first is reserved df means do not fragment if it is one then fragmentation is not allowed and as if third bit which is mf which is more flag fragment to follow if it is one then it says in next frame that belong next frame belongs to fragmented frame see if this bit is zero then it says more fragments are not there means fragmentation is completed but if it is equals to one then it says more fragments to follow so in future frame you will be receiving fragmented frame right and if it is equals to 1 then fragmentation is not allowed right and fragmentation that will happen along with offset so in next video i'll explain you how fragmentation will happen and that i'll explain you by practical example right see this video is bit long so i'm not including this along with this frame format right so in next video i'll explain you how exactly fragmentation happens and i'll explain you so many interesting case studies as well as examples so that will give you more clarity I hope you have understood this video still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video